it's now the actual texture is a little bit too big if we compare it to the size of the building remember the building is 4.5 my units so this um, round four and a half meters in real life in the uh, as we set it in the scene so the texture size should correspond to that so I'm just duplicating the texture one more time so now I can put, put it to the side and start uh, refining the texture I've merged all the duplicated pieces in one layer so I'm going to hide the wireframe just so it doesn't get in the way and now with the clone brush selecting a bigger value and a solid brush just think, taking away the sharp edges of the texture Uh, you always need to try to make um, not to make uh, some repetition of the texture too much and hide the uh, spots visible spots and that the ones that pop up in die uh, less visible so I'm just going to cover the texture just something different spots trying to move uh, to make the texture more random and not duplicated I'm just going to scale the texture even even more so this looks fine and I'm going to bring this uh, brick texture all we need to do is uh, make the, uh, this middle section of the texture the other ones are the two walls that won't be seen at all uh, from the camera so that's the roof and the side wall so they won't be vis visible to the camera so uh, we don't need to make it uh, to make texture for them but if you decided to make uh, probably like a movie scene it would be wise to make them as well to paint them I'm just going to check the size of the scene I know this is four and a half my units big I'm just checking to see how it corresponds to, to the bricks that I've just uh, inserted into the texture so again the same thing I'm scanning them down now just to match the size a little bit better that seems that seems correct size so now I'm just going to duplicate it as I did with the plaster texture I'm just going to erase the edges so it doesn't have that sharp boundary between the duplicated textures and again with the clone brush just sampling and deleting some repeated lines I'm merging uh, the layers together and just scanning down the size of the clone brush now I'm starting uh, to get rid of more of the uh, repeated stuff like if you look at these holes you can see they pop up in the eye and so if we have uh, more several of the same holes it really pops up in the eye and looks too duplicated and not randomized 
so I'm just trying to uh, have a little bit more variation in the texture This seems fairly, fairly okay. So the next uh, texture that I'm going to add is this, um, like a little bit of a splatter or dripping dirt that's uh, accumulated beneath something. So I'm just going to position it just right beneath the window. That's the position of the window. At the moment I'm going to tune down the opacity because it's just too dark. You can always look at a reference a real houses. That, uh, that will give you a real nice idea how to make things how dark is the grime, what type is it, is it rust, is it um, like dripping water, it's always good to look at reference when you do stuff, so I'm just going to save it as a Targa image and going to test it out, the current texture that we have until now. So make sure that in the plugin manager you've turned on the the Maya the, the Maya Manta Ray uh, renderer. So I'm going to assign you Mia Material X shader to the left middle uh, foreground house. I'm going to call it left foreground house. First I'm going to insert uh, file texture in the color slot turn off the filtering let's select our texture that we've just um, created out of photoshop so if we open the render settings we need to do one more important thing and that is under indirect lightning to turn on the physical sun and sky. I've already turned it on, but I haven't changed any other settings. So just click on that, and then under quality, when you go under frame buffer tab, we need to change the gamma. We need, we need to change it because when you turn on the physical sun and sky, it applies an extra gamma correction on top of our old textures because our textures are uh, they have already applied 2.2 gamma to them. So we need to, if we turn on the physical sense guide, this will apply another 2.2 gamma on top of them. So we need to uh, get this one um, number of gamma and delete it, uh, divide it by 2.2, which will give us 0.4545, which will be rounded to 455. Uh, Another thing is to in the if you go to the camera attributes and under uh, mentor ray and then lens shader we have another gamma type uh, number which is point two point two and this one we need to set it to one now this way we don't have the gamma correction applied to all the textures twice another way to do the correction without the uh, modifying all of those numbers per, per texture basis so if you go to the hypershade and under the utilities shaders uh, you can see the gamma correction node you can just apply it to your texture before feeding it into the material and this you apply it. this way you can apply the gamma correction So I'm just opening the render view. Uh, I'm just going to check the quality. 
just go to set it to 2 so we can render faster let's do a test render on the scene just going to position the camera so we can get a bet better look of our diffuse texture so let's go to the render view and render from the perspective camera <coughs> 